Hi, this is Camille, and in this video, I'm going to share with you my top 10 PowerPoint tips for working with templates. Templates can be tricky. They're a bunch of finicky little things that most people don't know about when they build it, and they end up creating landmines for them down the road in the building process. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the top 10 things I think most template designers should know. Let's jump right in. Number 10, do save your PowerPoint template as a .potx file. This is the first tip because it's one that even some companies who sell PowerPoint templates don't know. A PowerPoint template is only a template if it's a .potx file. Otherwise, it's just a set of pretty slides that users can copy and paste or completely veer off from. That's not a template. It's what I call a fake template. To learn how to recognize fake templates, check out the article up here in the eye icon. A real template is a blueprint that sets the basic framework for every single slide and works as a plug and play format. If you want to use a template, then you need to save it in the proper template format, which is the .potx file type. That way, when you open it, you'll start a blank presentation that follows the blueprint that you set up. Number nine, add guides around the placeholders in your slide master to maintain consistency. Whenever I create a template in PowerPoint, I like to add guides around the placeholders on my parent slide layout. That way, if I accidentally nudge something or if I want to make things easier to align in the normal view, I can just turn those on again and see where everything is supposed to be placed. Here's an example of what that looks like. Number eight, include your theme files with the template. A template is actually more than the blueprint of the layout. It also includes the theme, and the theme is composed of font and color pairings, among other things. While it's not necessary to send the font and color files along with your template, it's a best practice because it ensures that when you open up the design options, your custom formatting settings are visible to the end user. Number seven, add specialized placeholders where needed. If you know that your layout will call specifically for a photo or a video, for example, I recommend inserting a placeholder that is specifically designed for that purpose. Not only will this make it clearer for the template's user to know exactly what should go in that spot, but it will also be easier for the user to manipulate. For example, a picture placeholder will crop and resize itself better than a regular multi-content placeholder will. Number six, edit the prompt text to help instruct your users on how to use your template. One of the best ways to help your template's users is to give them clear directions. Did you know that you can edit the prompt text for your placeholders? Yep, you can type anything you want in here. Some suggestions for things to add include formatting instructions or even types of situations the slide should be used in. Make it easier for your users to know exactly how you intended this slide layout to look like and they're way more likely to follow your instructions. Number five, don't remove the bullet points from the text placeholders. While it's extremely tempting to remove bullet points from a text placeholder so that your users are not tempted to use them, this actually lays a little landmine for you down the road. Let's say that despite your clear instructions, someone types in text into the placeholder and then decides to add bullet points. Yikes! Now you have bullet points that don't match your template's formatting. This is why I always recommend formatting all the elements someone might use and then providing instructions to not use those elements. It's not foolproof and it sounds counterintuitive, but I'd rather make sure that if they do use bullet points, they look consistent across the entire presentation. Number four, don't delete the title placeholder. This is another common mistake many PowerPoint designers make. When you build a template, you may decide that you want your slides to look totally different from what PowerPoint gives you as a default, and you may be tempted to delete the title placeholder, but I don't recommend this. Why? Because this will likely create issues when you're copy pasting slides to and from presentations that are based on your template. And when you go and reset your layouts, you'll likely end up having to reset your entire slide master. Number three, don't embed fonts. <laughs> Using custom fonts can be a great way to add personality and style to a presentation. However, if you use a custom font, you want to make sure it displays on every computer that will be opening that presentation. One way to do this is to embed the font into the presentation, but don't do it. This is actually a terrible idea and a feature that I think PowerPoint should remove completely from its software because it almost never works and is more likely to lead to serious problems down the road. Trust me, all the PowerPoint experts say don't embed fonts, just don't. If you want to use custom fonts and still keep your presentation as a PPT file rather than a PDF, for example, then you will have to install your custom fonts on every computer that will be opening that presentation. You can learn more about safe fonts and how to work with custom fonts in this tutorial of mine that you can click to up here. Number two, do add user instructions and sample slides to your template. 
Most tools that we use come with a manual or some kind of set of instructions. Your template should be no different. You should never assume that the end user knows how to use it. In fact, you should assume that your end user will have no idea how a template works and what you designed it to do. That's why my second top PowerPoint tips for templates is to always include user instructions and sample slides and to make it as detailed and clear as possible. In fact, some great designers even go so far as to create short video tutorials or webinars to walk their users through their template. That is fantastic. Here's an example of user instructions and sample slides that I've created in the past. Make sure you think of the types of content your user will be creating, the roadblocks they'll encounter, and the mistakes they're likely to be making. That way you can help them avoid them. And finally, drum roll please, number one, don't delete layouts in your slide master. This is a common mistake many PowerPoint designers make, even the most advanced users, and I'm guilty of it myself. When you build a template, you may not like the default slides that PowerPoint gives you. That's totally natural. You may be tempted to delete the layouts you won't be using. It makes a lot of sense, right? In fact, this is something we used to do at Nuts and Bolts all the time until I learned the hard way. Now, I'm guessing you're not using your template in a total vacuum. There are chances that you're using your template with a bunch of other people, and you're likely gonna be copy and pasting slides from other presentations into ones that use this template you're building, right? Well, what ends up happening when you delete a layout from your slide master and you paste in slides from other presentations that have a complete slide master, PowerPoint doesn't necessarily know what layout that's supposed to match and it will bring in that layout from another presentation and you'll end up with a clogged up slide master that could have up to hundreds I've even seen of child layouts that were brought in from other presentations one by one. Now, in PowerPoint 2016, if you have the Office 365 subscription, PowerPoint has actually made this a lot easier and it has stopped bringing in other layouts from other presentations. However, if you're using an older version of PowerPoint or if you're working with other people who have older versions of PowerPoint, this is a huge landmine. So I highly recommend not deleting your layouts, just leaving them in there and then letting your users know not to use those layouts if they're tempted to. So that wraps up my top 10 template tips for working in PowerPoint. If you found this video helpful and you learned something new, please let me know in the comments area down below. That tells me that you enjoyed this video and I should keep making them. Please also give us a thumbs up in this area also to let us know that you like this video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Camille with Nuts and Bolts Speed Training and I will see you all at happy hour.